How you doing, YouTube? Matt with Massive Beer Reviews. I'm back with yet another review. And yeah, a little bit of collaboration time. We have some Evil Twin Brewing. We have some Westbrook Brewing in the form of their Imperial Mexican Biscotti Cake Break. Um, yeah, a lot of words, a lot of beers. Um, Evil Twin. Brooklyn opening their own brewery soon. Their actual own shop. But uh, they've been the quintessential gypsy brewer for quite a long time. A bulk of their beers come out of Westbrook. So, um, with uh, Westbrook, one of their more, more popular beers, or their most popular beer, is their Mexican cake. Uh, whether it be the base version or the barrel-aged version. Um, and with Evil Twin, one of their more popular, one of my more favorite, because that's how you use English, is their Imp Imperial Biscotti Break. Um, and, uh, yeah. It's almost a natural, almost a, a, a foretelling that these two beers would eventually merge and be all smashed together and round together in this whole thingy here with, um, yeah, beers and stuff. Anyway, basically what we're talking about is Westbrook's a Mexican cake mashed into their biscotti break. So, uh, is that what's going to be? Is it going to be better? Is it going to be worse? Is it going to be whatever? We don't know until we finish this review. Anyway, so yeah, natural kind of collab going on here. As far as what it says in the bottle, Evil Evil Twin Brewing, Westbrook, Imperial Mexican Biscotti, Cake Break. Um, let's see, 10.5% alcohol by volume. It's an Imperial Stout, uh, ill with coffee, cinnamon, almonds, cocoa nibs, vanilla, habanero peppers, and diacetyl. Oh, no, wait. Actually, that doesn't say that there. I thought, I thought that was what... Yep, puts in all his beers. Anyway, um, it's a joke. <laughs> um, anyway, um, we have on the side here, producing Bottle of Evil Twin in Westbrook, and that'd be that. Um, otherwise, it's cool. I mean, you pretty much have your, um, you know, your, your uh, what's, what's, what is that called? I was, your kind of um, uh, Mexican wrestler mask kind of thing combined with your, your uh, Day of the Dead kind of kind of a skull there going with a little bit of uh, geometric patterns, a whole bunch of uh, Mexican cake and Evil Twin inspired yadiness. I like it. It's okay. It doesn't blow me away. Got a little fatty snifter here. Uh, I'm not really going to be worried about color on this sucker, as I assume it's going to come out dark as sin. And uh, yeah, that's motor oil. Let's, let's get a nice pour here. Get a big Fatty snifter glass of awesomeness on Christmas in the last day is December 25th, 2016. Oh, Christmas up in your piece. Uh, pinky finger, um, you know, of infinitely compact head. Nice creaminess. It looks like what I want my coffee to look like color wise. And it's dark. I mean, that's all we're really going to get off that sucker. It's kind of what we guessed would be going on there. So, yeah, let's just dive into the nose to see what we have. Definitely getting um, like a uh, like a like a chili kind of a peppery vibe out of this, with a little bit of cinnamon and like a semi-sweet milk chocolate kind of vibe. A little bit of roasted malt, but non bittering, and uh, yeah, it's really soft. Like the milk chocolateiness in here. Like I said, it's a semi-sweet kind of vibe. But it, it, it has this nice kind of creamy um, kind of like a, like you're making an actual like old school kind of milk chocolate kind of things and pieces and stuffs. No, it smells really rich, but not overly sweet. Um, like it smells decadent. I shouldn't say rich because rich is going to, you know, denote actual like sweetness. It smells decadent, but not too sweet. Um, you know, I like sweet stuff. Sweet stuff is awesome. But I think as you kind of evolve, just not with beer, but with food, you know what I mean? You start to savor a lot or start to appreciate more savory things, things that aren't overly sweet. So when you start to get into desserts, it's not all about sugar. And this kind of is in that vein where it's giving me a little bit more savoriness as opposed to just straight up sweetness. And like that, that kind of slightly spicy, kind of peppery, kind of under undertones and notes and things underneath. Just dig it for him. Make me dig it. Nose-wise, at least. So yeah, she looks good. She smells good. Let's see what she tastes like. 
Cheers. It's very, very tasty. Very drinkable. That's the thing about this. This is a very scary drinkable. Was it 10.5%? Not even close to being detectable. Um, just super smooth. Um, starting to get a little bit more kind of roasted malts, kind of coffee vibes out of it. A little bit of, of spiciness in there from the peppers is starting to build as usually like in a lot of these kind of Mexican stout kind of beers to where you kind of have that kind of a milk stouty kind of lactosey thing keeping it in check so where it builds but it never gets too uh, over the top. A lot of the ancillary spices like your cinnamon and things like that, they're there but they're definitely like third and fourth players. It's all about chilies. It's all about coffee. And it's all about the beer itself which is really fun to see. I would imagine like conceptually when you take two beers that are pretty robust, pretty big beers and you're going to mash them together, you're kind of afraid you're, the beer's going to get lost in a shuffle. So when you take the influences from both of those beers, mash them together, and the beers still stand out, you're still getting a really nice, delicious, um, very um, rounded, yet um, meaningful um, profile from the beer itself, as opposed to just, just the spices in, in general. It's kind of a bonus. Almost like fluffy Porteresque in vibe too, which I kind of dig. And like I said, infinitely crushable to the point where this is not going to be a hard beer to put down. And I could, I, I would venture to say most people um, could drink a bomber this to their head and uh, be totally comfy with it. It's not, it's not trying at all. It's not rough at all. And uh, yeah, it's pretty damn good. I'm digging this now. It, let's let's flip it a little bit and talk about like negatives. Tons of diacetol, like I said. Um, no, I'm not. I'm just, I just have to say that just to fuck with. If you have actually ever watched one of these, just to actually fuck with them. Um, and uh, it's it's it, what the only thing I would say it would really lack is a a calling card note to it. Roundedness is awesome. I love roundedness. I love I love a smooth beer. I love I love beers that are welcoming. But I I, I do want, especially to, when you get up in the higher ABVs, I want things that are going to kind of set themselves apart and be a little bit um, unique. New York, I guess you would say. And while this is fantastic and it drinks really easy, it's it's not giving me any kind of identity. Um, I mean, it is a bit bipolar in concept being that it's two beers mashed together. But I just want something to kind of set the tone and, and set the mood for this. And while it's delicious and I will say drink the shit out of this beer, I just wish it had something a little bit, one stark redeeming quality that kind of set itself apart from a lot of the beers that are trying to do things like this. Um, so, yeah, delicious, but not epic next level stuff. For me, at least. Uh, so let's talk about it. So one of the better base, and that's the thing you have to understand here when we're talking about a barrel-aged beer or whatever, base spiced stout. Let's go that way instead of a base stout in general. Um, yes, probably barely on the edge. Maybe the outside looking in, but right on the edge of that. Really nice, beautiful, well-made, rounded to fuck, easy to drink. Just like I said, just missing that little bit of calling card quality. Uh, value availability, I think I paid... 17 or 18 for this you know for a beer like this collab wise whatever it's kind of fucking market value so take that for what it's worth it's been here and there um so i don't think it's super hard to find by the time i post this it's probably gonna be gone but um this is uh christmas if i didn't say already um 2016 because sometimes it takes me that long to post videos but um um if you do find it it's it, it's worth picking up if you're into those kind of styles and let's just jump to that say what we like when you like what if, if you like what, will you like this? Um, if you like you know, either the Spears, Biscotti Break, or Mexican Geek. Um, I would probably lean a little bit more Biscotti 
than Mexican cake on this one. Um, but, I mean, it's kind of negligible. But if you're into those kind of beers, um, then you'll like this. If you're into those kind of Mexican stouts, if you're into crushable, larger ABV stouts that um, really um, you can drink and not really blink an eye at. And if you like good beer, and if you like collaborations, because teamwork, baby. That's what the season's all about. So there you go. Another review in the books. Hope you guys enjoyed the review. Uh, if you did or you didn't or somewhere in between, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Like, subscribe, and all that fun, fun stuff. Um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Untapped, Massive Beers, and all four of those places. And yeah, another review down. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully enjoying a nice Christmas beer right now. And hopefully see you next time. Cheers.